Hal Jordan and the Green Lantern Corps, issue 21. Robert Venditti, writing and V. Kenneth Marion on art. Uh, well, I, didn't, I don't read this, so and Connor's not here to yeah. talk to you about it. So, Matt, you are no. on your own. You, you are a guy gardener without a ring, stranded in the yeah. cosmos. Oh, that's fine. I still got my warrior blood, so that's fine. You know? But, yeah, so we pick up here where we left off with uh, Hal and Rip going... In a contract that's a plane, which we were talking about last week, where, you know, Simon gets the mechanical jab, but Hal, who everything is an airplane, doesn't. You know, yeah, yeah. First thing you see. He, Especially since but it doesn't have to actually be a plane. It could just be a bubble. Like, they're moving with a, the green energy. It could be a bubble. It could be a square. But whatever. It could be anything, and he goes with the plane. It could be a giant um, banana. Yeah. Well, no, it's yellow. So I don't know if that, that would work. Maybe a green banana. Uh, yeah, well, bananas start off green. Yeah, yeah. So, But basically he's talking to, to Rip about the Green Lanterns and that how everyone assumes they're all the same because the ring is based off of Will. But then Hal points off that just the four Earth Lanterns are also different because they express Will in a different way. Hey, no, six now. Well, they're talking about the, the main four here okay, that okay. have been they're involved in the fight uh but it's like guy jumps right in the line of fire without thinking and then oh that's that's his will whereas kyle just wants to do what's right and so that's where his comes from and then john is so meticulous and he plans everything out and he's like i don't understand that he's all about restraint that's not anything i have and it, it's really cool that it, to me, this show's Venditti does get all the characters, even if I don't enjoy reading his Hal as much as the pals. You know, but... And then, of course, Rip Hunter asks Hal, who... Hal's just kind of begging, well, ask me how, how I'm different. And he's just like, I don't lose. And so they go, and they're gonna they're facing down Sarko, you know, um, while all the other Lanterns are... They had shut off their rings because of the prison beasts and um they they start fighting them and kyle once it's kyle and sornik end up going to the weapons armory and getting out these guns uh to help take out the prison beasts and then we get to sarko and at the end of the last issue we saw that hal's gauntlet had become a full-on well not house Krona's gauntlet hal had used to become pure will has formed into like this giant mech. So him and Rip have to prevent that from happening. So that's basically how they beat Sarko is Hal remembers where he had buried the gauntlet. And so they end up digging it up and disconnecting it so it never really becomes a thing in the future, which ends up leaving Sarko vulnerable. And he ends up uh, taking a, a beam of light from uh, when Hal destroys it and ends up dying. And so everyone's like, oh, yeah, it's, it's great. The beasts are falling down because it, it flashes back and forth between the lanterns fighting the beasts and uh, and Hal and Rip doing all of this. So we also get Kyle grabbing the ring while this is all going on. The one that Rip had handed Jon Stewart that is from the future to prove that he's who he says he is. And he ends up looking who Sarko's parents are. Which this is probably my biggest problem is when you find out that he was related to, to Sinestro in all of Kyle's advances on Sornik the last couple issues, it's kind of obvious that Kyle's the dad, Right? But it's supposed to be played for this big, like, reveal at the end that because Sarko's dead, Kyle shows up at the last minute and is like, hey, we, we can't leave him here. We, you know, we have to we have to take him back with us. And they're all kind of looking at him like he's weird, but they end up going back to Mogo. Rip goes back to, you know, the time stream, and they put Corona's gauntlet back in the vault. So none of this can happen. Which, again, timey-wimey stuff. So now if none of this could happen, where does Sarko come from? Because it was a gauntlet that helped him get back, you know, from the past or to the past. Um, and they give Rip his, the ring back. 
And then you see Kyle crying that Sarko was the son. And he wants to figure out what went wrong. Who's the so, Moloch? It was, it was Sornic. Right, okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, well, because in the last couple of issues, it's, oh, he's just been coming at her. Like, we're going to go on a date, and let's do this. And even here, she's, you know, tending to the wounded, and he's kind of making, like, hey, we make a great team, right? And it's like, hey, mm. Kyle, there's stuff going on out there, you know. All so, right, so. Again, uh, not a big secret that's going on, but. Kyle being the emotional lantern, I'm sure it'll propel stuff forward. Yeah. Kyle's, but yeah, Kyle, it's, it's kind of... Go ahead. Kyle had an alien son. Okay, I'm just, just keeping track of where things have been going <laughs> in this yeah. book that I'm not reading. <laughs> Although, I can't with the timey-wimey, does he? Because there's he's from a future now that doesn't really exist. So, uh, that's I, fair. it can still affect Kyle, right? Yeah, he, like, he knows that he remembers that this would have happened, yeah. Right, you know, so he can go forward, but it's just kind of the stuff that Venditti does that I kind of roll my eyes at. But there's other things that I just I really love, like the lanterns. You know, you get to see Guy and Kilowog standing shoulder to shoulder with these big, you know, sci-fi blaster guns, hmm. trying to take out these prison beasts. And I'll tell you, you what, get, Guy is yeah. a lot more bearable when he's with Kilowog. Kilowog. I'll say that much. Yeah, they they're. They're different sides of the same coin, where I feel like Kilowog's the guy that, oh, once you get to know him, he's this big, soft teddy bear. But Guy's kind of like, well, when you get to know him, you still kind of want to punch his teeth out. So, mm. But they both put on these big, scary outer shows to keep people at arm's length. You know, yeah, that's, that's Hal, and the, Hal and Pals, as we've come to call it. Not we. I'm not coming to call it that. Well, me and Connor. Connor's stupid, stupid new name. 